to complicated me. one. I'm a, I'm telling you right off the bat, this one does not work out clean. It's not going to be that magic situation at the end where everything is just like, oh, it's exactly what I wanted. That makes me laugh. So, <laughs> x squared minus 3x minus 21 divided by x minus 7. I know what you're thinking, but it's got a 7 and a 21. It must work out clean. No, it does not. All right. I thought it was 30. I'm going to start out the same. I know x minus 7 is going to set up my box. I don't know how long my box is going to go. I need in the first box an x squared. Well, that's easy. How do I turn an x into an x squared? I multiply by an x. So if there's an x up top, what happens when I multiply that by the negative 7? Negative 7x. Negative 7x. I don't want a negative 7x. What do I want? I want a negative 3x. So I need a positive 4x so that that works out. That way when I combine these, I get the negative 3 that I want. Well, how do I turn an x into a 4x? With a positive 4. And 4 times negative 7 is negative 28, which is not what I want. Okay, no. How'd you get negative 7? So I need a negative 21. I have a negative 28. I'm just going to make one adjustment because you said negative 7, right? It could if be I put a negative 7 right here, is that going to make negative 21? That's going to make negative 21. Yeah, I need a positive 7 out here. Now, up to now, you're like, okay, what's the big deal? So I needed a negative 21. I just added a 7. Here's the big deal. What do I multiply x by to turn it into a positive 7? Uh, fraction or something. Yeah, like you run into this issue where a. x times 7 isn't 7. It's 7x. Seven so when you run into an issue that you're like, there is nothing that will multiply so by an x and turn it into a 7, we, so we run into all kinds of issues. So this right here is your remainder. remainder. Pause that thought. I'm going to come back and explain what to do with that remainder by showing you a number version. Hold that question, Alex. I think you're on the right track. Uh, no, but I, I, which X do you make? All right. So let's do 211 divided by 5. All right. 5 does not go into 2. How many times does it go into 21? Four times, which makes 20. When you pull down that one, how many times does 5 go into 11? Twice. That gives you 10, which gives you a 1. Now, you guys learned, like, I don't know, what, 6th grade? And you never looked back to add a decimal and a 0. And to say, okay, well, how many times does 5 go into 10? 2. 2. So the answer is 42.2, right? Before you learned how to do that, when you divided by 5, you said, okay, there's 4, and there's 1 left over, and that's not right. And then it goes in there twice, and there's 1 left over, and you said, oh, it's a remainder of 1. So 42, remainder 1. Does anybody see a connection between a remainder of 1 becoming a point two? How, because these are both answers to the oh. same question. What's the oh. connection, Alex? The, connect, the connection is, yeah. Very eloquently stated. <laughs> yeah. Bailey, what's the connection? <laughs> I, 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 knew, I knew it, but I forgot yeah, it. Yeah. Okay, hang on. Bailey? Um, if you multiply point two by five, it will equal one. So if you multiply 0. 0.2 times 5 oh. equals 1, so could you argue the remainder over that? If I say 42 and 1 fifth, does that match? So where did the 1 come from? The remainder. That was the remainder. I'm shook. And where did the 5 come from? The whatever that's called. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's actually called the div the divisor. 
I had to think about it. It's actually called the divisor, but in this case, I'm just gonna call it the factor, right? Because it's what I'm multiplying by. So here's how this works. Your answer up here is x plus four is the normal part of the answer. One seven. And then plus your remainder over the factor you know. Seven over x minus seven. So it'd be x? No. And that's it. It's gross and disgusting and it doesn't happen a whole lot in Algebra 1. It pops up every once in a while, so we kind of need to like show you. But all it is is, oh, I have a remainder of seven over what I was originally dividing by, okay? Would the calculators give you the same answer? Do what? Would the calculators give you the same answer? No, so anytime you have a problem that doesn't have an equal sign and has variables, the calculators will not do it for you. Because calculators will not, really what you're doing here is simplifying this. You're not actually getting like, oh, X is seven. You're getting a simplified answer. Okay, so let's kind of practice another one and I think it will make more sense. How about M squared plus 10M plus 18 divided by M plus three. All right, I'm going to set it up with m plus 3 on the side. And I know I need m squared in that first box. How am I going to get m squared? Uh, multiply with an m. Which gives me 3m. I don't want 3m, I want 10m. So what do I still need? Uh, 7m. So then when I put the 7 up here, because m times 7 is 7m, that gives me 21. But I don't want 21. I want 18. So what does that need to be? Pink? Negative 3. And again, here's where you run into when you start going, how do I turn an m into a negative 3? You can't. So if you get something that cannot be done, that's your remainder. So my answer is, I don't give it a shot. Oh, m plus seven plus negative three over m plus three. You are you exactly minus, right. right. You could just put minus instead of plus the negative three. That totally works. It's the same thing. What's your question, I own? Okay, so if it, instead of an m, if it was actually a number and we could multiply it, what would we do? Then you just keep going. But it won't. Like, are you saying if this wasn't an M? Yeah, if it was like four, then. And then you would say, how do I turn a four into a negative three? Then you could, but you're not. You're always gonna have a letter right there. Okay. It's kind of a common setup. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm gonna pause this and 